What's up folks, I'm Jason C from The Mass and Drum. Today we have a challenge video, one that may be familiar to you. Remember the you only need five bourbons video trend that was started by a Reddit thread? Myself and a whole mess of whiskey tubers answered the call and faced that challenge, but the same list and challenged has switched from bourbon to rye. Same rules, same categories. I've been challenged by the wrench himself, Trev, the Nighthawk Wilson, <laughs> to come up with my own list. I've watched his and some other lists and I went deep into my shelves to find some unique and different options. Old Forester Rye and Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye were popular options, but I looked for some other options, but some were familiar. I think you will all enjoy. Let's do this. All right, so first up is a daily sipper. Now, Russell's Reserve Single Barrel from Wild Turkey was my daily sipper for a while, but another rye has been getting better and better over the last year or so. What is it? It's Wilderness Trail Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye. Wilderness Trail has been killing it since they started using their extensive library of yeast strains and knowledge to craft some of the most impressive whiskeys we have seen from a newer distillery. Now, I love their bourbons, but this one right here, their rye, is easily my daily sipper when it comes to a rye whiskey as of late. Okay, so what do you get in the bottle? It's a three grain recipe, 56% rye, 33% corn, and 11% malted barley. The barrel is a 53 gallon with a number four char, which they enter at only 100 proof and 105 proof to break down the sugars of that barrel and get the most out of their rye. This is aged a minimum of four years with regular expressions expected to be between six and eight years of age once they get there. Uh, priced around 60 to 65 bucks, so right in the same ballpark as the Russell Single Barrel Rye. So you have single barrel, barrel proof, non-chill filtered, sweet mash, rye goodness. You get the Kentucky sweet with some traditional mint and citrus rye notes. Some of these single barrels can get really super interesting and either more on the sweet or a minty side. Uh, being barrel proof and non-chill filtered, this whiskey is very viscous. It's, it's syrupy, coats your mouth really well at that varying uh, proof, which can be on the lower end because of that low entry proof. Highly recommend. Uh, also, you're starting to see a lot of barrel picks too of this, uh, this specific Wilderness Trail rye whiskey, and some of those have been stellar. So keep an eye out for this one, my daily sipper for 2021. Next up is a cheap mixer. Everyone picks Old Forester rye or Rittenhouse rye. And while both of those are delicious and great options to mix, I have another one that's always been my favorite, I think, the last few years. That's right, it's Wild Turkey 101 Rye. This has become more available as of late. This is a non-age stated uh, rye whiskey, but reportedly about four to six years old. You can get a big old liter for this, like this for only 35 bucks where I am, and it's absolutely like Christmas in a glass. So this tastes like fresh oranges, fresh you know Christmas tree, and you got all the cinnamon and the baking spices all mixed in. The 101 proof makes great cocktails where you want the rye whiskey to shine through a bit and not be muted by bitters or egg whites and whatever else they're putting in cocktails these days. Uh, the real beauty of this bottle too is also it's a great rye to sip neat. This is a Kentucky rye, so it's a bit sweet, has some caramel drizzle, vanilla, brown sugar, lemon, orange, Again, those holiday baking spices like cinnamon and clove. My favorite cocktail to use this is a Vucare, which is just rye cognac, Benedictine, sweet vermouth and bitters. Love this rye. Guys, try that cocktail. Try it with, uh, try it with Wild Turkey 101. I love my turkey. Gobble till you wobble. So the next one up was Impress Your Guests. Okay, this one was tough. Now the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye was a pretty unanimous pick among other whiskey tubers. And with good reason, that stuff was freaking delicious. But I went another direction with a newer rye that I reviewed not that long ago that was just so damn good. And it's what's in my glass right now. This is the Ruby Rye Springs from 48 Whiskey Company, or as I like to call it, Midwinter's Night Stram on steroids. All right, so why does this impress guests? First, it's a $200 bottle. That's a pretty expensive one. Second, Ruby Rye Springs is a seven-year-old 113.4 proof MGP 95.5 rye. Now, when I bring this one out, people are like, eh, rye is not really my thing, especially those crazy 95 fivers from MGP. But when I tell them this rye was finished in casks for 42 days, originally used to age Ruby Port wine, which then went to Baragua Spirits in Richmond, Virginia, where the barrels were used to age a blend of rums, then they're like, oh, okay. Well, that sounds interesting. Let me give that a go. And then the first sip comes and then they're hooked. Mouthfeel, red berries, 
blueberries, spicy black pepper, the citrus is still there, the mouthfeel, this stuff makes anyone I give to stop and stare at the bottle, take pictures, and go hunt for it. It is in my top three favorite expressions that Forgate has put out overall. Midwinter's Night Sram is good, but kind of cute compared to this. <laughs> Not even a fair fight. This Forgate is a monster and one of my favorite rye whiskeys I've gotten to try so far this year. Absolutely delicious. Blueberries all day. Mm. Absolutely love this stuff. Next up is my Friday night pour. So after a long week at work, what am I reaching for? Something reliable, but has a good proof, good age. No surprise here, folks. That's right, it's Pikesville from Heaven Hill. Again, this is probably a pretty common pick from a lot of other whiskey tubers, but it's one that I just could not leave off the list. Now, this one would have been my everyday sipper, but it's been a bit harder to find for me as of late. So I saved this one for those Friday nights where I want something sweet and something spicy. So this is from Heaven Hill, mash bill of 51% rye, 39% corn, 10% barley, 110 proof, and six years old for about 50 bucks. So Pikesville was first produced in Maryland by the L. Winan and Brothers Distillery starting in 1895. The brand went through several changes of ownership and was last produced in Maryland in 1972 by the Majestic Distilling Company. Now, after Majestic Distilling closed, there were still enough whiskey stocks available to keep the brand going until 1982, and then it was sold to Heaven Hill. This is another one of those barely legal ryes, a 51% rye, rye spice vanilla, a little bit of cherry in this one too, mint, almost like a mojito that's spiked with Luxardo cherries and caramel. It's sweet, it's very suited for a bourbon drinker. I absolutely love this one. Now, if you compare the Pikesville to this rye unicorn called Thomas H. Handy, it's got the same stats except for maybe the proof. Uh, it's a, they're both very sweet ryes, they're both the same age. This is six years old, the Thomas H. Handy is six years and a couple months old. Pikesville is available and this is not. Listen, nobody loves a good handy on a Friday night more than I do, but this handy is a bit hard to find, so Pikesville it is on my Friday nights. Last bottle is a special occasion pour, and honestly, I didn't have to look very far to pick the one that I picked for this one. Check it out. Here it is, a hand-filled, Fort Nelson Special Edition Barrel Proof Rye Whiskey from Michters. I mean Michters. <laughs> so at the time, I, when I hand filled this bottle at the distillery in Louisville, right across the street from Louisville Slugger, it was actually the highest proof barrel proof rye that came out of one of those barrels. Uh, this came in at 115.2 proof, which at the time was the highest one. I'm not sure if they've had a, high, a higher one since then, but this stuff is special. So what's really cool about this is when you fill your own bottle, you get to put the labels on, put the, uh, the strip on top, fill out your name, the, 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 the bottle date, when it was bottled. Um, so this one was 530 of 2019, 57.6 ABV. Uh, also with the front of the box, you get to kind of put your own, uh, your name and uh, a sticker on there as well. It's a very cool, just very personal experience. If you're ever at Michter's and they're, they're, they start doing this again, or they are doing it, you know, I highly recommend it. Now this stuff is dark. I mean, it's, it's super dark. I just poured a little bit just to uh, wet my whistle a little bit with this one. It's so damn good. Uh, it's chocolatey, it's coffee, it's minty. It's very brown sugary. The most delicious and impressive rye I own easily, hands down. Well, well, well above that Thomas H. Handy from the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. This is a very, very easy pick for a special occasion. You bring this box out, you open this, people see the color, they get to try it. Oh my God. Yeah, the coffee, the chocolate, it's all, it's all still there. Still, it's like overlaid with the mint and the rye spice. It's absolutely easily my special occasion uh, rye whiskey bottle that when I break this thing out, people are, people are paying attention. All right, guys, so that's my list. It was a ton of fun. I wanna thank Trev Wilson over at the Bourbon Ranch for giving me the challenge. But of course, I have to keep the train moving, so I am challenging my favorite OGs, Scotch Test Dummies. That's right, give me your eyes, fellas. I would love to see what both Scott and Bart pick. 
for each of these, you know, different categories for a rye whiskey. I know those guys like scotch, they like bourbon. I think rye might be a, a big challenge for them. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, if you liked the video, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. Let me know what you think of my list. Leave a comment below. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So I will see you soon on the Mash and Drum. Gonna have more of my, uh, my special edition Mitchters. That's for you, shelf turds. Take care, everybody.